Our DMX workspace has been rebuilt from the ground up for DragonFrame 3.0. DragonFrame controls light via the DMX protocol using our DDMX S2 box. The DDMX X2 is then connected to a DMX dimmer pack. You can find these on Amazon or at music super stores that have stage lighting supplies. Now in DragonFrame 3, you can create separate lighting programs for each exposure, but for this demo we're going to keep it simple. We want to make sure that we're on the global program. We make it easy for you to see what program you're on because we, we print the name of the program very large right there on the screen. So the global program is what we're going to work in today. X1 means exposure 1 and it is linked to the global program. If we had an exposure 2, let's say shooting 3D stereo pairs, they both might be linked to the global program. But if we had a backlight situation where you're shooting front light, backlight, you may have a backlight program and a global program. Again, for now, we'll just keep it simple and do one program. So we're on global. Make sure you're connected to your DDMX box using scene connections. We're already connected. DMX is the top line, and this is where you connect and disconnect. Here are our lighting channels. We can see the DMX channels 1 through 9, but our system can handle up to 100 separate lighting channels. Each channel has a lock, a badge, which I'll show you in a moment, um, a color setting that is just simply a label color, and then a button to turn the light full on, to turn the light full off, or to solo the button. And then, of course, we have our dimmer slider. This shows the percentage right here. And the last icon is our parenting and unparenting switch. This is more important if you have multiple layers of programming. Okay, so right now I'm going to turn on our live video, which is this button here. I can click on this and we have a live scene. Now you can see we're in the dark. I'm going to dim up our first light, which is an overhead light. There we go. There's our overhead. I'm going to click into the name and call it overhead. I'm also going to give it a color. There we go. Our next light is uh, raking from the side. I'm going to call this side. And we'll give it a color as well. And the last light is a blue fill light from the front. And I'm going to call this blue. In fact, we'll even give it a blue color here. There you go. These buttons here turn on badges that will show up in your DMX working area. So I can click this, these buttons and you'll see these series of little panels show up that I can move around. Here's the overhead. I'm going to put it above. I'm going to put the side on the side. I can double click these. Now. I can control these lights from these badges or from the sliders. See, if I grab the overhead light and bring it up, you see the overhead light go up and go down right there in the live view. And if I grab the side light, take it down, bring it up, there you go. Same of course with our blue light. And by positioning these badges right in the frame, it's an easy way to keep reference of where your lights are. You could organize these around the frame, or you could organize the badges uh, from an overhead uh, view of your stage. Okay, let's set some keyframes. Okay, we have a timeline here. We're running at 12 frames per second, so at 48 frames we have 4 seconds in this little area. We'll go 2 seconds in, frame 24, and we'll take 2 seconds to bring the uh, overhead light to full up. So I'm going to take it to 100%. Then I'm going to bring the playhead back to the beginning. I'm actually going to drop these down as well and take that down. Now if I run the playhead up, you'll see that the light goes up. I can also hit play and watch it happen in real time. Now these are linear keyframes. You can select the keyframe and make it into a softer. We actually have three options, linear, soft, and even more soft. So I'm going to change it to a medium and play it back again. 
There we go. All right, now, once those lights come up, now you see I've got these keyframes here. I'm going to just get rid of those. And by, I just selected them and deleted them. Now I'm going to... Um, I'm going to set those as black. So with my, my levels all the way down, I'm going to hit um, the, and I'm going to select these two channels there and hit the Make Keyframe button. So now I've got keyframes there holding those to black, and I will fade up the side light. Oh, I have them both selected, so they're both moving. Okay, I'm going to fade up the side light, and then a little bit later on, Oh, but I've set keyframes there as well. Um, a little bit later on, I'm going to bring up the blue. Okay. And I'll move this black keyframe over a little bit. And one of the nice things in our user interface is that you can actually see the frames and you can see a general idea of what the light's doing over those frames. So now I'm going to bring the playhead back to the beginning and hit play. And there you go. One, two, three. When you go back into the animation window, the program goes back to the proper point for your frame. In this case, frame one is pure black. As you shoot your scene, Dragon Frame automatically updates the DMX as you go, so you don't have to worry about it. You just go ahead and shoot, and all of your lighting will animate along with the shot. Let's go back into the DMX workspace, and I'll show you some fun things with these keyframes. The keyframes, if you grab the top of it, can be moved along and you'll see the, um, the graphics update with it. And if you float along the bottom, you'll see these two arrows. You can actually change the value of the keyframe there. If you put the playhead there, you can go to that particular badge. Here's the blue badge, and I can affect the keyframe from there. Now, you can also select a group of keyframes and select them all together, bringing their levels up or bringing their levels down. If you have audio in your scene, you'll hear the audio as you play back your DMX and you also see the audio waveform in this panel here. This is so if you have to sync any light cues with something that's happening in your audio track, it makes it very simple to preview that here. So this is the basics of our DMX programming. Thank you.